I'm at Mills for Extra. Joining me today is Kamal Al Salali. He is a journalism professor at Ryerson University, and his first book, Intolerable, a memoir, is out later this month. Kamal, thank you very much for thank you. joining me. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. What inspired you to uh, uh, to write a memoir? You're still a a young man. Yeah. Well, it's not an autobiography, so it's a memoir. So it's just looking at a slice of life, and um, and it is. It, what inspired me to do it was um, I went back to visit my family who lives in Yemen in 2006. I've been in Canada since 1996 and before that I was in England for uh, almost nine years and, um, and I had, I'd see them once every four or five years. And, but in 2006 I went to visit them and there was a, a gap of five years between visits. And in those five years the situation has deteriorated so much that I came back um, um, I would say severely depressed and very sad and, and, and help, feeling very helpless. And when a friend of mine said, why don't you just write about that experience, try to sort of, you're a writer, I'm like, write something about it. The book is not really just about me. In, 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 on some level, I'm a supporting character in a book where it's just set really in the Middle East and, and Canada and falls in the Middle East and Canada and England. Um, and I only exist in relation to my family, pretty much. It's, it's about the, my relationship with my family. It's about coming out as a gay man uh, in the Middle East and then pursuing the life that I wanted for myself. You know, there are uh, um, you know, an awful lot of young gay and lesbian people mm -hmm. coming to Toronto every day. You've traveled a, a very tough road. Um, right. Do you have any advice that you would pass to those young people who are looking to move to, uh, to change countries change I this book is very much a, a gay man's story like this book is written as a gay man and it's about it's about this journey that I wanted to have to live in a place where that, that's accepting and where I can feel at home and I hope anyone who's watching this or reading about this book or hearing about this book uh, in a somewhere in a small town or in, in, a, in a other in a home environment or a culture that that is that is violent or homophobic to know that there that you can get out of that you can you, you, you have to know that sometimes the, you, the only option is to get out and that's okay it's okay don't be a hero get out and look after yourself and like you have to re recognize that if you if you want your personal freedom you may have to sacrifice things like family ties and being close to you know mom and dad and sister and your dog and family and you know the your, your, the family room having your meal cooked in and your you know your you know like the fam the family experience but what you gain um, in return is worth so it, it basically you gain your personal freedom mm -hmm. and you gain your identity um, so if anybody is, I mean, if, 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 if uh, this sounds really pretentious, but if it is a lesson at all to be learned here, is that, is that to run away, it's not a bad thing to run away from a harsh environment, walk away from it before it damages you, um, and embrace, and find a place in the world where you can build your own community, where you can build your, you know, your, we can create your friends, and a system of support and where you can experience culture or the things that make whatever makes you happy, uh, be that a club culture or, or, or you, know, uh, you know, film culture or, or, you know, or just you know, artistic expression or working in, a, in media, whatever. Just find what makes you happy and, and, and this, if, it's, if it's not available in your hometown, just run to the next big city and look for it. Uh, your sexuality played a big role in your uh, uh, your choice to um, uh, to move. Um, how did it come to be? Was it something that you saw in Western culture? Was there some presentation of the sort of Western gay community mm -hmm. system that mm -hmm. that you heard about or learned about? Right. Um, uh, well, I mean, I, I, I've always, I've always known I, w I was gay. I didn't really have the word for it because I was very young. I mean, I'm in, in the book, I talk about like homoerotic experiences at the age of five. Uh, you know, a palm olive ad with a man sort of lathering up and finding it really a turn on, right. and being really, really adored. Um, Dick Sargent from Bewitched, <laughs> and uh, at a very young age, like watching him, I thought it was very beautiful. Um, and but I didn't really have a word or terminology for it or anything. But as I maybe towards my late teens, 17, 18, yes, I I kind of tried. I 
began to associate sort of Western um, films and tele American television and music with liberation of in, a, in, in a broader sense, but with gay liberation in particular. And I started reading a little bit about gay liberation and maybe watching the odd movie here and there where they would have a sort of a gay um, minor character or supporting character. Um, and I, I remember in about 82, 83, 82, I saw the movie uh, Making Love, which was one of the sort of early gay gay movies um, with the, um, uh, Mark Hamlin, I think, is in it. And, um, Harvey, uh, Harry Hamlin. Harry Hamlin, Harry, sorry, Harry, Harry Hamlin. 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 And, uh, um, and Kay Jackson, who was in uh, Charlie's Angels. Right, and, right, um, right, right, right. So that's like a rites of passage movie for me, because with that movie, I thought, oh my god, they're, they're, you can actually have a gay, you know, perfectly normal. Right. <laughs> you know, not, not that, the, you know, but, uh, and, and that was that sort of, I, yes, so there were there was certainly examples of what of particularly American, I would say, yeah. Hollywood and popular culture. But because I was studying literature, I was sort of reading a lot of literature at the time. I sort of also kind of tried to read Joe Orton and and Oscar Wilde and tried to sort of find out what is the sort of, sort of gay subtext that they're writing about. And right. uh, um, but I, I I just I I knew it had to be in an English speaking country in the West. It had to be the UK or the US, and at some point I thought Australia, and then eventually thought of Canada. And right. But it's the, cult, the cultural influences in my life, including you know icons like Barbara Streisand, who like really, from the time I was 13, I was like besotted with her, and, and sort of helped me, helped me sort of discover sexuality, and helped me discover that, okay, later on I found out that's you know, kind of camp, and that gay following, and right. sort of built, put two and two together. Was there a gay community that you became involved with in Cairo before you went to the UK? Or? There was actually, yes. Um, sort of around 80, in, in 84, I went to, to England for a visit to visit my sister who was living in Liverpool. And I um, sort of called the, uh, sort of a gay helpline and there just to see what, you know, like just generally kind of to talk to someone. So it was just, you know, really the beginning of coming out. And, um, and then when, when the operator said, find out that I am um, live in Cairo at the time, he said, well, let me look at Spartacus and see what's in Cairo, um, what's happening, what's, what's Spartacus list in Cairo. And he mentioned this, hotel, this uh, tavern in the Nile Hotel in Cairo, to which I, you know, I haven't been in, but I've been to the hotel um, with family before. And, like, and I couldn't imagine the idea of a gay bar in Cairo. But he said, that's what it says, like lots of gay bar on Thursday night. And when I came to Cairo, when I, came, when I went back to Cairo, so maybe a few weeks later, I plucked up sort of the courage to go in, and and it was like um, a, a sort of an English, a faux English tavern thing in the middle of this chain, ho you know, hotel chain, and uh, and I, I talk about that in the book as well, and it, uh, I. That was probably my first sexual experience as a, as a gay man um, uh, when I sort of I met someone uh, there and and f and going on subsequent sort of Thursdays I met this n sort of underground circle of gay men and they're usually their Western friends usually because it's like Western East meets West usually in in those situation in those situations and for about a year I lived a very I mean, in, in retrospect, a very delicious but very secretive underground gay life as a gay man in Cairo. Well, very secretive. I would never tell my family about any of this, and uh, well, now they know. Uh, but um, and uh, and it revolved around uh, sort of the way is the equivalent of, of drag here would be belly dancing in the Middle East. So it revolved around following all these sort of over the hill belly dancers in these taverns and in this sort of. Uh, nightclubs that are in the middle of in a very in areas that I would not have normally gone by myself at night at least and and it was it was quite lovely it was quite lovely because it, it's probably the first time I sort of met people who spoke to me as a gay man and identified as gay men who were Egyptian or um, or Westerners and um, but sadly because of family family situation we had to leave Cairo at that point and go back to Yemen for and where I lived for about a year and a half, and went back to the closet again, and which was quite a shock to me. Yeah, you write, I think, at one point in the book of your sort of coming out experience to your family, and write that you never really did, that right. it never really came up, that it no. was a sort of an unspoken. But you, 
you mentioned a moment ago, well, now they, now they, uh, now yeah. they know. Now the, I mean, I, I wrote a you, book. I expect them to find out about it. So, have yeah. you, um, well, that, do you think that will be the first, or have you had a no, conversation? No, no, I think, I think, I think uh, uh, here's the deal. I mean, we, in, in the Middle East, we don't have this, uh, the, the kind of scene, mom, dad, I'm gay kind of, comf you know, scene. That's just, that's not, like, to many people, that's not exist. Yeah. But my family is smart. I mean, they figure out I'm 47, never mentioned a girlfriend in my life. Um, um, pretty, not exactly butch, and and very much keep my private life to my, myself. And they they just they, we don't talk about it openly. That's all. There's an understanding. They stop trying to you know match make for me on all and all that stuff. At, right. at some point, they just stop even mentioning when are you gay and get married. Up until probably about eight, ten years ago, I would say that was a conversation. So have you found a, right. a bride yet, or should we send you one? Or, or and, uh, and about 10 years ago, they kind of stopped. Mm -hmm. And I talk in the book about a scene uh, where my mom, um, I, I was in a relationship here uh, with somebody who lived in Montreal, and we had long distance relationship for five years. And in 2001, when I was visiting, uh, he would call me quite regularly uh, in Yemen. And then, and then my mom was always wondering, why is this man calling you from Canada all the time? And um, and said and, and then it, she said he must really love you, and to me that was the kind of acknowledgement of the fact that I'm in a loving relationship at the time I was at the time, and that's as close as coming out as I'm ever gonna get with my family. I think it's uh, I think I think it's important to uh, uh, to tell people why you chose the title because the there's title. a very yeah. it's very it's obviously very well thought out right. and a very deliberate uh, yes deliberate. Yeah. Choice. I mean, it, it's deliberate because it also includes tolerable in it. Um, so somewhere there's the, this tolerance as well, and, and tolerable. And intolerable is bec because intolerable is, is not permanent. Something intolerable is intolerable for the time being. This is the condition. The condition it became intolerable. And there, there, there is a glimpse of hope in intolerable somewhere hiding in that, that this would not be the way it is forever. It's not like saying hopeless or, um, or tragic. Um, it is intolerable, but there is a possibility that it will, not, it will become tolerable in the future. Um, and and I, 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 I chose the title because I, 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 I like the idea of, of, of a one-word book anyway. I like that I like because I think that people would think about, about that title more. Um, and I, I, because, and I couldn't think of a better word to describe how I feel. I feel that the situation that happened to my family is intolerable, shouldn't have happened, um, but I'm hoping that it will change. The book is called Intolerable. It's in bookstores now. Kamal, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us about it. Thank you for talking to me. Appreciate <laughs> it.